what product should I be selling online? It's probably the number one question or roadblock for newcomers to e-commerce. In fact, this is a real email that I got late last night through the contact form on our website uh, where Karthik has said, I need to learn how to select products for my e-commerce business. So that was pretty funny. I was planning to make this video already and I just happened to get this email last night. So in this video, I'm gonna talk through a framework that you can use to select e-commerce products to sell for your new store. And we're actually gonna walk through this framework step-by-step step and find some real products to sell online. All right, so I'll start by just talking through the process at a high level and then we'll kind of dive into the step-by-step. Step. So the first thing you should be doing is identifying markets that you already understand very well from your own personal experience. Many people skip this step and not a lot of online experts are teaching this method, but I think you'll find it very effective. After you've done that, you're gonna do market research to validate opportunities in those markets that you understand very well. So let's dive in with the first step, which is to start with what you know. Now in e-commerce, if you wanna greatly increase your chances of success, you're gonna to wanna to brainstorm markets that you already understand very well just from your day-to-day -day life. Now, if I were to try to start a skincare or beauty brand or something like that, it would probably fail miserably because it's not something that I know anything about and it's not something that I'm particularly interested in. So instead of picking a hot market like beauty products, I recommend you start by investigating your own hobbies, interests, and skills. These three areas of life, the ways that you spend your time, the things that you enjoy, and the things that you're good at, are actually clues to the markets that you already understand very well. And I'll show you exactly how this works with a little Excel template that we're gonna walk through together right now. So I'm gonna flip over to our product ideation brainstorm spreadsheet. I'll probably drop a link to this in the uh, video description so you can make a copy of it if you would like to. But step one is to just list out your different hobbies, interests, and skills. And I would just go for broke here, list out as many as you can, you know, even if something's not a great fit, that's okay, you'll figure that out later. Now just write down everything you can think of. So I'm just gonna take a minute and fill this out for myself. Okay, so I've got a pretty good list here of, you know, eight or nine different uh, hobbies, interests, and skills that I thought of for myself. Some of these you might be looking at and thinking, well, how does this really lend itself to an e-commerce product like chess, for example? That's that's pretty weird. Well, I mean, at first glance, yes, that might be your reaction to this, but all of these areas are actually niches or little markets where people who are also interested in these things are willing to spend money on things that are going to help them to solve problems. And so that's why step two is to identify some of those problems. Since I know a lot about these things because they're things that I'm interested in, things that I do in my own day-to-day -day life, I can easily identify some of the problems or pain points within each of these markets. So we're just gonna fill out one of these now, um, and just to give you kind of the idea, rather than have you watch me fill out this entire spreadsheet. Um, but for example, let's just take this first row here, hiking slash camping. Um, so this is just something that my wife and I love to do. So I know quite a bit about you know what the times that I get frustrated or uh, prevented from enjoying this to my fullest potential. And those are the pain points, right? So I'm just gonna list out a few of those. Um, so number one, let's say um, something I noticed recently when we were on a camping trip. Um, so you can see all three of these examples are just things that would prevent me from enjoying my hike or my camping trip um, to its fullest potential. Those are pain points. So again, just writing down kind of abstract things from my own experience so far. Step three then is to take those pain points and just take, you know, flip it on its head and come up with a solution to it, even if it's kind of theoretical. Um, this is sort of a product idea though, something that solves a problem for a person in a niche. So again, let's just look at each of these pain points. Number one, um, maybe there's some kind of, you know, high-end cooler that uh, that lasts a really long time or something that would allow me to, to solve that problem. Number two, maybe there's a, uh, a new app or something, new social app even, where people report live conditions. 
that one's pretty complicated probably to implement. Uh, number three, uh, shoulder pain. Okay, maybe there's uh, some ergonomic uh, backpack for hikers or something that prevents back pain and promotes good posture, something like that. Okay, so you can see this, I've done one example here with just one of my areas of interest, hiking and camping. I identified three pain points and three solutions to those pain points that all serve as sort of product ideas. Now, I understand my target market really well because I am someone who enjoys hiking and camping. So that's the idea here with this first step, start with what you know. I'm not gonna fill it out for all of these, but I could do a similar exercise. So this is just step one. Once you've done that, step two is to then do market research. So you're gonna take these areas, these niches that you've identified and look for products within those niches. You know, if you find things that are different from the product ideas, like the ones that I just uh, brainstormed, that's totally okay. It's just sort of to get you started, get you thinking in the right mindset. So what are we really looking for when we do market research? You're looking for a few things. Uh, number one is high demand. Right? You want a product that people are willing to pay for. Number two, low customer satisfaction. So what I mean by this is among the current products that are out there or suppliers that are offering products to customers, how are people's satisfaction levels with those products? Are, they, you know, are there any problems with the best products in the industry? If so, those are areas where you can improve upon the existing offerings and differentiate yourself in the market and capture market share. So we'll talk about how to figure that out in just a little bit. Uh, number three is a high profit margin. And number four is ideally high ticket. These are kind of related, so I'm gonna make that like a sub bullet actually. Um, so you wanna have something that, you know, after the cost of goods sold, leaves you a healthy profit margin that you can then use to spend on marketing to acquire customers. So we're gonna look at how to find your profit margin for each product idea that you come up with as well. Next, favorable delivery windows. Particularly if you're drop shipping, this becomes a problem for some new sellers where um, if you're trying to drop ship products from, let's say, China, the shipping time might be two, three, four weeks or more, and that's not going to lead to good customer satisfaction on your new e-commerce store. So that's something you're going to want to look at up front and make sure you're finding products that ship and are delivered quickly, uh, especially with the way people are accustomed to one-day shipping from Amazon these days. And finally, something we can develop a brand around. So, you know, you want to make sure that when someone comes to your website, they feel like you're an expert in the space. And so you want to find a product or a group of products around which you can develop a brand. And we'll talk a little bit about brand building exercises uh, later on. So these are the criteria that I look for when I do market research. Note that you're probably not going to find all of these in one particular product or uh, you know, each product is gonna have its strengths and its weaknesses, but these are the things that you should be looking for. Um, you know, the highest scores on, in these areas uh, are gonna lead to the best products. So we're gonna talk about how you can go about you know, actually quantifying these criteria in just a moment. Um, but how do we do that? There are gonna be some resources that we're gonna use. Um, and so these are some of those resources on the screen here. Um, feel free to pause it and write them down if you want, or I'm going to show you some of them in a little bit in this video. But I'm going to flip back over to my little Excel template here, and you can see um, I actually have some hidden columns here that I'm going to open. Um, step four is to do that market research in this template at least. And so now I've got these uh, markets over here, pain points here, and potential solutions or product ideas here. And to the right of that, for each one of those product ideas, I'm going to also want to jot down these quantifiable metrics that get to the criteria that I just spoke about. So keyword search volume is going to give me a relative sense for demand. How often are people searching for this type of product on Google? Very important to know. Number of competitors, you're going to want to know who's already in the space, how many people are selling this product if you're drop shipping, or similar products if you're trying to launch a brand new product. What is the shipping time for a product if I'm drop shipping it again in particular? What is the expected cost of goods for this product? What's the average rating or reviews on Amazon, let's say, uh, to give you a sense for customer satisfaction for this product? What expected price point are you going to be able to sell this product at? 
and then therefore, what is your profit margin? So these, I hope you can see how these metrics all lead into those criteria that I was mentioning just a moment ago. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go away, I'm going to do some market research for our potential product ideas here. Uh, I'm gonna come back, uh, I'll show you this spreadsheet filled out, and I'll show you exactly how I got all of these, uh, these metrics here as well. All right, so I'll be back in just a minute. All right, so I'm back. I've done a little bit of market research and I'm gonna show you a product that I found that actually is kind of exciting. So here's what I did. I went to a website called Spocket and Spocket is a drop shipping supplier uh, that can enable you to find um, really good products that ship pretty quickly, which is why I like to use it. And so uh, given that we were looking for this hiking and uh, camping niche, here's how I, I started my search. I went to find products here in Spocket. I went to the sports and outdoor category. And then I sorted by price high to low. Um, and so what I mentioned uh, when I was talking about the criteria for a good product is that I want something with a good profit margin. And so honestly, what I like to do when I'm drop shipping is look for high ticket products, products that retail for 500 to $2,000 or something like that so that I'm sure that I have a nice healthy profit margin. That way I can afford to spend more to acquire each customer and still turn a profit. So I searched in that way and uh, it didn't take me too long. I looked at some of these products here and then lo and behold, there was actually a cooler, which was one of the items that we had written down on our spreadsheet as a potential to solve this, this problem that I identified in hiking. And so I thought that was cool. So I opened up that product and it looks pretty, pretty interesting. It's actually a solar powered cooler that has a ton of capacity. Um, it can store, I liked this, 15 wine bottles or up to 28 big water bottles. Um, so it's got tons of information here about the product, tons of specs, which is really good. If I'm gonna start a drop shipping store, it's important to have this information. Um, I was able to identify the price point and the expected cost of goods here, as well as the shipping time. And so I filled all of that out in my uh, spreadsheet here. You can see I've got the shipping time, expected costs, price, and then the margin is just the price minus the cost. So I have $253 of potential profit margin on this product. That's great. That means I can spend up to about $250 on ads for each customer that I acquire and still be turning a profit. So that's really strong, really promising. Next, I wanted to do some uh, research into the demand for this product. And so I went to SEMrush, which has a free keyword search tool that you can use really just to get basic information about potential keywords. So I just typed in solar cooler and I found out that it has about a thousand searches per month, which is not so bad, just in the US that is. And it's also a 32% uh, keyword difficulty, which is not too difficult, you know, not as easy as I would hope, but, uh, but not really, really not bad at all. Um, and this tool is cool because it's gonna give me some other keyword ideas here as well. And you can use this if you plan to use, uh, you know, organic marketing like SEO to try to drive traffic to your e-commerce store, which is definitely something that I would recommend you do by creating a blog and really carving yourself out as an expert in your niche. So that was my demand research. I also wanted to do some competitive research. So I went to uh, Google Shopping and I just typed in buy solar cooler online. Um, and you can come down here on the left side of the screen and you'll find this sellers um, area where you can count up the different brands that are selling this product. You know, I would count out eBay and AliExpress because those aren't really brands. So when I counted these up, I got to about 20, 25 competitors, which is a little higher than I would like, but honestly, not too bad. So then I went to Amazon and I started searching for solar coolers to try to get a sense for customer satisfaction for this product. And I found, uh, you know, this is kind of the top line of, of um, res results that are not ads. Only a couple of these are even coolers and I typed in solar cooler. So it tells me there's not a ton of people selling this type of product on Amazon in the first place, which is good news. And second, the average reviews are, you know, four, three and a half stars here, which again, not great. So, which is good news for me that it's not great. 
And so the next thing I would do here if I were to continue with, with this product idea is I would go look into these reviews, focusing on you know the one, two, and three star reviews, read them and figure out why people are dissatisfied with this product. Is this something that I could solve by selling a product like this one that I found on Spocket? I don't know the answer to that yet, but that's just what my next step would be. So that's how I filled out this spreadsheet. You can see I, you know, I, I went through, identified my hobbies, interests, and skills, identified pain points within one of those. I brainstormed solutions or product ideas, and I was actually able to find a product that fit pretty great criteria here by doing some market research that I just walked you through. Now, last thing I'll mention as kind of a bonus resource, um, if I wanted to start a store to sell this high-end cooler, um, I might need to come up with a good brand name or website domain name. Um, there's a nice tool called Lean Domain Search, which I'll link in the video description, where you can just type in some keywords and it will give you available domain names that you might be able to use as your brand. So I think this is pretty cool. Um, I would probably try to sell this cooler to hikers because that's the market that I understand well. Although I know this cooler would be applicable to other uh, market groups as well. That's just the one I would probably pick. So I typed in solar hike on, uh, on lean domain search. Maybe there are some other solar products that I could be selling to hikers as well. And uh, I got some results here. So you know, mysolarhike.com, for example, is available. That sounds like a pretty good domain name if I were to launch this theoretical brand that we've been talking about. All right, I just jumped back over here to the list of resources so you would have them. I'll link to these in the video description. If you thought this video was valuable, then I hope you'll just like the video and subscribe to our channel. I'm gonna be creating some other videos in the near future about the e-commerce process. Our goal is just to teach you how to start and grow an online business here at Boardroom. So my name's Charlie, thank you for watching and see you next time.